They saw they saw us filming and you know, what we were doing, and they gave us another pineapple bun each. <laughs> I wonder how much this cost today. Yeah, how much? Mother. Four dollars, five dollars and ten cents. I'm gonna do a YouTube video today. We we're filming the best food in Burwood. Hey guys, Sydney Food Boy here, and today we're in Burwood. Burwood's actually one of my favourite places to eat. It's also one of my favourite places to have noodles across all of Sydney. Burwood's a bit of a melting pot of, you know, all these different aspects of Chinese cuisine. So what we're going to do today is we're actually going to do a second video of Cheap Eats in Sydney. If you haven't watched the Cabramatta Cheap Eats tour, go and watch that one first. I'm thinking a lot of dumplings, buns, maybe some noodles as well. Let's see how much food we can get for $35 here in Burwood. Alright, this is our first stop. It's called Yang's Dumpling. Essentially what they do is a particular type of dumpling from Shanghai. It's called Sheng Jian Bao. Let's go in and try it. Can I get one number one? Four pieces please. Thank you. Would you like me to move the table up this way to get more lighting on this way? Mother Great, yeah. Ooh, perfect break, man. These are dumplings uh, in a style which you don't really find a lot across Sydney. So Yang's Dumplings has gotten a little bit uh, famous for these. Essentially, it's a pan-fried pork dumpling. Um, really nice coating on the bottom there and really thin layer of dumpling skin. So it's pretty tasty. Uh, the best way to eat it... Oh, can I get a... Oh, actually, I got a spin here. The best way to eat it is to get a little bit of soy sauce and vinegar. I've just separated the two to make it a bit easier. And then just grab the, oh you can see the soup coming out as well. Yeah, you can just open it up and eat it man. Oh, a bit of a squirtle here. <laughs> what in there? Mmm. So good man. Look at that. Awesome, awesome. You know, thin dumpling skin. Really tasty meat on the inside, a lot of soup in the inside as well. And that's the crispening on the bottom end of the dumpling. Very good. Mm. <laughs> right, it's a really good dumpling. Let's go again, one more. I think we're gonna try it differently this time around. It's, you know, the, the squirting nature of the dumpling. So I might take a bite of the top end and then put a bit of sauce on the inside. So I'm gonna grab some these two sauces again. Just add a little bit. How about the soup? Yeah, that works a lot better. <laughs> You're getting more of the soup out there. And then let's um, have another one of those bites. Mm. Man, really, really good stuff. Can you see that? Really awesome dumplings, these ones. And these ones were four for 780. Or you can get six for nine eighty of the hand fried uh, underneath ones. So yeah, really good. You guys want to try? This is a big ass dumpling. Uh, you want me to film you guys eating? No. no, no. <laughs> <laughs> this place is sort of a cafe right next to the station in Burwood, but there seems to be a little pop up at the window where they do curry fish balls. Like it looks like Hong Kong curry fish balls. Quite cheap. So let's check it out. Just, uh, just four. Thank you. Are you Sydney Food Boy? Yeah. Yeah, Hello. I watch the channel. Oh, really? I, 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 really, I really like the video in uh, Karamata. I love the food today, there. Today we're doing Burwood. Ooh, curry fish balls. The last time I ate these, I think I was in Karamata. There's a, there's a restaurant called Super Dish. And the time before that, I was actually at a place in Chinatown in Sydney. And then before that, I don't think I've eaten it since Hong Kong. So I actually really like this. And we only just walked past this place and saw that they were doing like, you know, cheap, quite affordable food. So let's try this out. Curry fish balls. Mmm, that's good. Really nice um, kick to the, the spices in the sauce or the curry sauce. And even though it's called curry fish balls in Hong Kong, it's spicy, man. You can really feel that heat. I'm gonna bite one into one of them and just to show you guys. Yeah. These these fish balls have been sitting in that really spicy curry sauce for a very long time. You can actually see how much that sauce has sort of gone into the fish ball. Really, really tasty stuff, man. Mm. And that was 
$3.80. I'm glad I found that. <laughs> you guys want to try? It's spicy though. Yeah, I'm spicy. Spice? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I walked past this shop and I looked at some of their prices and I think these are some of the cheapest buns that you can find in Burwood. So we'll see how this goes. So it looks like they have a nice array of different food here as well. I love seeing bars like this, you know, hot bars and cold bars and just food that you can order takeaway. Are you guys able to make it hot or warm? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Oh, for sure. Oh, hey, check this out, it's pretty cool. They have a coin counter. <laughs> that's awesome. Woo! Man, this bun is hot. All right, let's open it up. So, pork bun, $1.20. A little bit small, but hopefully it's good. Arguably the cheapest bun I've uh, bought in recent times. Oh, this one doesn't even have the, the paper down the bottom, I don't think. It might. Sorry, let me just check. No, I think this one you can just eat it straight. Anyway, this is what the bun looks like. That's the bun there. $1.20. Let's see how this how good this is. Good. Wow, good meat. That's good meat in there. That's what the bun looks like on the inside. Really nice and fluffy. On the smaller scale, but the meat they have inside here, very tasty. There's a lot of seasoning in it, and all that seasoning is sort of flowing on into uh, onto the dough around it, which is cooked in. Mm. Today is pretty cold, so this is really nice, like having it all warmed up and stuff like that. Eh? If you have a look over here, look at all the juices that if you just squeeze out that meat there, that's nice. I really like the addition of um, shallots inside there as well. Put together, a very solid bun. And this isn't the same style as the one we had in uh, Cabramatta because that's more like a Vietnamese bun now, but a very solid Chinese style bun. Mm. What do we want now? I think $12.80, right? Yeah, $12.80. Pretty good so far. Let's see what we got next. This is Maria's Bakery Inn and they first came on my radar because one day I was walking past and like at 5 o'clock or 6 o'clock she would just ring a little bell saying oh you know the last things are for sale, the last things are for sale. So come on in, let's check it out. It's a very old school classic Asian bakery or bun bakery. So if you have a look on this side here, there's quite a selection of different buns. You got the chicken buns, barbecue pork buns, you got sweeter buns like black sesame, you even have like curry chicken buns. I feel like this is a lot more like Cantonese style if you will. Today what we're going to try is this here. This is the pineapple bun. Very well known, particularly in like Hong Kong and like southern China. So these types of cake shops are very well known for like these big elaborate cakes as you can see here. All these types of cakes too. And if you've ever been to an Asian, like a Chinese birthday party, a lot of the time these are the cakes that you'll find. I'll just get that one because it looks pretty. Yes, sir. No, 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 no. Please. Oh, no, no, no. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Maybe next time, man. <laughs> All right, so pineapple bun. This one costs $1.80. The other thing I forgot to say is this place has been on this strip, Burwood Road, for apparently over 30 years. So this has been here since like, you know, the very beginning of before all this started building up, before the Westfields, before the, the Burwood Chinatown and all that. So this place is OG, man. And that's why when you go inside, it feels like old school and classic. But yeah, pineapple bun. I think the best way to eat this is to rip it so you can actually see the fillings on the inside. I don't think there's any fillings on the inside. I think the best way to, to open this up is just to rip it so you can see like the cloudiness on the inside. Just pull this away. I'm just gonna rip it open, yeah? Yes sir, look at that. Yeah, so it's sort of like pineapple powder slash flakes on the top and that's how it's cooked. And inside, obviously, it's like a very soft cloudy bun. Anyway, let's try this. Mm. I think the best part about this bun in particular is actually the powder on the top. There's so much like really nice sweet flavour in it. Mm. Yeah, and the cool thing about this pineapple bun is like, it's just powder at the top but then they glaze it over. But if you see this and you just rip it open, it's so crackly soft man. One more for good measure. Mm. I should say as well, like with, with pineapple buns, as delicious as they are, there's not really a very strong pineapple flavor exactly. For me, it's always been a little bit more sweet. And I've always thought maybe they called it a pineapple bun because um, just of the crackly nature of the top. I don't know, you know, if you guys are, you know, Cantonese or from Hong Kong, correct me if I'm wrong. Mm, we're getting full today, man. Oh, thank you so much. You didn't have to. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> 
Oh, nice, man. They saw, they saw us filming and you know, what we were doing and they gave us another pineapple bun each. Disclaimer, we didn't pay for these. They just gifted it to us. These guys are wonderful, man. Thanks. Now let's go across the road to one of my favorite restaurants in Burwood overall, and that's Xi'an Eatery. I'm going to show you something inexpensive to order there. Let's go. <laughs> if you guys remember from one of my very early videos, we actually ate uh, biang biang noodles here, the really thick wide ones, but we're going to order something different today. If you guys haven't watched that video yet, go ahead and watch it because the, the noodles there are very good as well. So normally what I order here is this, the signature biang biang noodle. But today we're going to stick with this one. The Xi'an cold noodles. We're going to get the... We're going to get the cold noodle. Thank you. Alright, so these are called cold skin noodles or Xi'an cold noodles. And I think in Chinese, in Mandarin, it's called liang tu. And essentially what it is, it's... Um, Pretty much noodles that are made from flour and then hand cut, cooled down. It's not actually a skin, but it sort of has that appearance, I guess you could say. And I think that's why it gets its name, correct me if I'm wrong. It's served cold with uh, chili oil, vinegar. In some restaurants, they serve it with peanut sauce as well, but I don't think they serve it with peanut sauce in this one. You have bean sprouts, you have uh, cucumber, a bit of carrot, and you also have this here. I've always thought this is tofu. It's very nice. Uh, the noodles are nice in terms of the texture, so it's nice and springy. And this dish here costs $8.80. Probably won't fill you up. I like to pair it with the Biang Biang noodles that you order here, but you know, from an affordability perspective, really, really good. Let's try it. Really nice. The thing I love about this tofu is it has some like almost like a jelly texture somewhere along the lines of like a jelly in the tofu and the, the noodles are like I said before very springy mm. like the sauce itself is actually very simple to make chili oil I think some soy sauce in there a bit of vinegar for some acidity and what I love to do with these noodles is like just grab a whole chopstick full try to get as much of the tofu skin the, the cucumber the carrot, the bean sprouts. You get a nice mouthful of the noodles themselves, but all this delicious crunch from the salads that it's in. Really good, man. Cumin lamb skewers, I reckon, would taste like really wonderful with these noodles, man. <laughs> I met the owners here last time. Uh, we filmed a video here. Really lovely people, man. If you haven't been to this restaurant, definitely come and check it out. Not just for this like cheap eats tour, but just try all their food especially the Bian Bang noodles. Very good stuff. I could eat this forever. It's like meat licorice. <laughs> it's almost like meat licorice. You guys want to try it? Yeah, for sure. So we hit up a few places now and my belly's feeling quite full, but this is another place I wanted to try. Oh, this place is called Tianjin Chi Tang, I think it's called. They specialize in two things. One is Jian Bing, which is like a Chinese crepe slash pancake using egg. And that's a very nice breakfast food. But today what we're gonna get is another bun. The bun here is a little bit different to the buns we've had at other places, whereas this one is a bit more, I guess you can say, crispy on the outside. More dense in terms of the actual pastry. So let's try it out. Yeah, they have a heap of different styles of buns um, with different fillings in them. You can get shallot filling, you get beef, you can get pork. Uh, you can even get chives with eggs, so pretty cool. Uh, it looks like they also do this, uh, it looks like marbled tea egg. So they boil the eggs and then they let it rest and braise it in this tea sauce. Auntie. Which one is better, the beef or the pork? I like the, uh, I like chai. <laughs> you like chai? Yeah. Okay, we get chai. 350. This is like really, really, really hot, but oh, that's what we're working with there. It is an egg and chai bun. It's not like the buns that we've had previously today. Um, this one is a bit more stodgy in terms of the dough itself and crispy on both edges. So how they did it was they heated it up and then they put it into like this giant metal press and that made it crispy again. But it looks like that's how they cooked it in the first place. Ooh, hot. Hang on. Mm. 
I love the flavour of chive as a vegetable, man. Like, it, it really has a very distinctive taste in a lot of like buns and dumplings and things like that. This one, it looks like they've used chive inside, they've used egg inside, they use some sort of vermicelli noodle as well to give it you know, a nice bouncy texture. Between the egg and the chive, it actually tastes really nice. I like it. I mean, the bun itself, like I said, is a bit fencer than other buns that we've tried. I wonder how this will taste with vinegar. We'll see how this goes, eh? Something tells me this will taste really nice with some vinegar on top. Mm. Actually goes alright with vinegar. While we're walking, this is a place that I really wanted to include, but I think we ran out in terms of the budget of this. Essentially what this place is, it's a Nepali restaurant and I was looking really closely at the Momo dumplings. So Momos are something I love. I traveled to Nepal in 2019. If you haven't tried Momos before, definitely give it a try. It's pretty much their version of a dumpling. It has like this nice spicy curry sauce in a way. I might do a video of a Nepali restaurant at some stage, so stay tuned for that. And as you can see, like everything that we've done today, it's all down this one main strip, which is Billwood Road. There's so much happening here. We've gone from like one edge to the other and then back around. And we're ending up in this place called Billwood Chinatown. There's a couple of different spaces to eat around here. So let's go. One thing we can't do this tour without is some lamb skewers. I love Chinese, like Northern Chinese style cumin lamb skewers. They taste so good, man. So this is a place that you can get it just on the go. Their skewers are a little bit smaller than where you'd find elsewhere. Overall, of course, anytime you have barbecue lamb, cumin, that sort of flavor profile, it's gonna be really, really nice. So let's get this one. Usually they would sell their lamb skewers in big cups and you'd get about uh, five for about $11.90. But today we're only gonna get one just to keep it within our budget, you know? Can I get one lamb skewer? Uh, just just one uh, hot. It's a 2021 coin. Look how shiny it is, man. I felt a little bit bad just getting like one piece, but you know, it is what it is. Anything for the video, right? And you can see on the lamb skewer itself, there's a nice balance of meat and fatty parts. I'm really hoping these fatty parts are melt in your mouth just because of how it was cooked. We ordered the hot one, you can get it mild as well, but the hot one has a lot more like cumin and peppers and that's why you see it like sort of half red on there. I reckon I should have got an extra hot because I love my spice, so let's try it. That's good. That cumin is really good. It's like half fatty, right? And that fattiness definitely melts in your mouth really, really well. That's proper, man. That's awesome. Good stuff. Also, just to give a shout out to another business that's in Burwood and that does really, really good lamb skewers. The Ugo restaurants do really awesome uh, lamb skewers with cumin and like really good quality lamb. I saw a Ugo restaurant down Burwood Road called Appendium Ugo restaurant. I had a look on their menu and they do like, I think three big skewers for 16 bucks. If you're eating at a restaurant, definitely check that out as well. $4, 60, 50, $5.10. Let's get dessert. Our very last stop is actually, it's a noodle restaurant and it's called, it's called Chongqing Street Noodle. They're more known for like spicy, numbing noodles, I believe. I haven't tried the noodles myself, but I did see like a jelly dessert on the menu, which is quite affordable. So I think we're gonna head in here for our very, very last stop, dessert. Let's go. I'm just gonna get one thing, which is the ice jelly. Is that all right? Ice jelly? Yeah. yeah. Thanks, mate. Thank you, bro. Nice. Thanks, mate. Okay. Wow, that looks so nice. I've actually never eaten this before. I had no idea what to expect for $2.80 as a dessert, but this is pretty, man. This is very nice looking. It's essentially a jelly dessert. And from what I gather, it's made from jelly powder. You know, you cook the normal way, you cook it in hot water and then let it cool down. And it just looks very pretty. Yeah, you can actually see the gradient of the dressing around it. But the cool thing about this dessert is, you know, there's a couple of things scattered on top, which is the white and black sesame seeds, uh, the nuts, and this over here. And apparently what this is, it's sweet fermented glutinous rice, and it's imported from China. And I don't think you can get it at many places in Sydney, so I thought that was pretty cool when I got told that. Apparently this is meant to be a very traditional dessert from Chongqing in China, and also like a couple of other cities as well have something similar. So I think what I'll do is just break up that jelly there. All right, I'm gonna take a photo as well for this. Nice. I don't think this is just nuts, it's like, like nuts and dried fruit together. 
I think this is a very refreshing way to end today's food tour. And I feel like you definitely need the dried fruit as well because that gives it like quite a nice flavor. I don't know if this is just me or my taste buds, but it almost has like a tiny slither of like a semi-alcoholic taste. Maybe I've just been drinking a bit too much alcohol recently. <laughs> very good stuff for $2.80. I feel like this is the type of dessert that would go really well with like goji berries and stuff like that as well. Do you like sesame? Uh, I don't have anything against it. It's very sesame-y. Alright, that ends it for our Burwood Cheap Eats tour. I think we did one hell of a job today. Yeah, I think overall, in terms of the amount of money we spent, we only spent $31.70. I'm pretty sure. Double check that for me. Oh. Yeah, so we, we clearly hit our budget of 35. This is this has been one hell of a video to film. Um, best cheap eats in Burwood for under $35. I also wanted to give a shout out to the two amazing guys behind the cameras today. Brian, who helped me film the Cabramatta Cheap Eats tour. How good, how good is this videography, man? And also Max, Max Laraya. Find them at their socials. We're gonna put it down here. Uh, this is gonna be Brian's. Brian, you edits. edit. This is gonna be Max's. Go check these guys out. Like they, they do a bomb job with videography and I couldn't have done this without them. You know, if you guys have any videography jobs or anyone in your family that needs any video done, go and suss these guys out, man. I really appreciate these guys for coming and helping out today with the filming of today's video. Once again, thank you so much for watching today's video. Uh, if you haven't watched the Cabramatta Cheap Eats tour, which is, I guess you could call this a sequel to that, go and check that one out. We'll put it into the description box below. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure you like the video and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Appreciate you guys. Catch you on the next one. Bye-bye.